out there, moguls. It's me, Marshall Silver, your personal millionaire maker. Getting very excited about my brand new show. Two hours a day, five days a week, I'm going to broadcast live to you. In the first hour of the broadcast, I'm going to give you content, information for better sex, more money, emotional, mental, physical, and even spiritual power. I'll also invite some of my cool multi-millionaire and billionaire friends onto the show to give you more direction, more advice, more strategies and gambits for having it all. The second hour is what I'm most excited about. It's when I get a chance to chat with you. Yes, you. You can call in, talk to me, ask me questions. And if you say the secret word of the day, you could win $5,000 cash. At the very least, if you're the most interesting call of the day, you could also win 10 ounces of freshly minted Marshall Silver 999 Fine Silver. All of that and more. Brand new Mercedes-Benz sedan or SUV up for grabs. My personal Rolls-Royce Phantom up for grabs. All the knowledge to get everything you want and so much more. All you got to do is log in to the show to get information about its release coming up. Two hours a day, five days a week, coming to you live from the bunker right here at Studio Money. I'm Marshall Silver, your personal millionaire maker. Let me bring in our hypnotist, Marshall Silver. It's uh, Marshall Silver, ladies and gentlemen, the world's fastest hypnotist. That's the amount. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe, but that is the amount. $10,000. Who thought, who'd have thunk we'd get here so fast? $10,000 cash up for grabs today. Should you say the secret word? Uh, all you got to do is uh, give me a call. Studiomoney.info forward slash live guests. Say the secret word. And you win 10 grand. It's that simple. Plus, I've got uh, 10 ounces of pure silver up for grabs as we do every single show. And we're really excited about that. Um, we've got a great guest today. I'm very excited. I met the gentleman over the weekend and influenced him, inspired him to join us on the show. So I know Anthony, uh, my producer, is uh, making sure he's in the studio ready to roll. And I'm uh, very excited. There he is. I see him there. So at any rate, you know, this is week two. We've only been on the air for two full weeks. Uh, you looked yesterday, I didn't look today, but on the chartable charts, we were number four uh, out of however many in investing as far as podcasts are concerned. So I'm extremely excited about that. More than that, we've been changing lives and we've had your calls coming in from all over the world. We've had your calls coming in. Let's see, we had uh, calls coming in from Scotland. We had calls coming in from England. We had calls coming in from New Zealand, uh, Trinidad, uh, and Tobago. Uh, we have had calls coming in from Mexico and so much more. And I'm excited to keep this thing going internationally. I do know that part of the challenge that people have is they often don't have anybody that's a reasonable voice to talk to. My son Maximus turned 11 yesterday. My, how time flies. And, you know, every time one of my kids has a birthday, I've got a 12 year old about to turn 13 in May got an 11 year old, got a, a nine year old daughter. And obviously kids are a really good indication that life moves too fast. And my children are certainly no exception. I was sitting with my son this morning. I was in the spa and he came out to visit me, brought me my latte, brought me my coffee. And I was chatting with Sterling and you know, he's 12. He goes to church. He's a good son. We homeschool our kids. He has uh, parkour, uh, jujitsu, music. Maximus plays baseball. They, they, they're not in public schools, is my point. And because they're not in public schools, they have a lesser likeliness, lesser, not completely eliminated, lesser likeliness of bad information getting in their heads about any number of topics, uh, let alone just disinformation, flat out bad information and woke information. So we're really careful to be sure that our children are only exposed to certain things. My son, Sterling, is in a band. He's in a rock band. And his rock band rehearses in somebody's garage because that's where rock bands rehearse. And he, 
the neighbor kids, not a part of the church, not a part of the music community that he belongs to, neighbor kids come and visit because the kids, uh, you know, jam out in the garage. And they talk about all sorts of topics because that's what kids do. And they were talking about condoms and birth control and other things that my son and his church uh, buddies don't get a whole lot of conversations about. And so when we were chatting this morning, I said, son, I, I pray that you believe and you know that I am a safe place to have conversations about anything. And I attempted to have a couple of delicate conversations with him. He said, not now, dad. I, I, when the time is right, we can have that conversation. Just not now. Okay. I just want you to know that I'm your daddy and you can have any conversation you want with me about sex, about money, about power. Anything you want is completely open and fair game. So I'd like it to be you. Uh, as I said, first hour, we roll on all platforms if you're brand new to the program. And uh, we have cool guests on. Often I'll teach a content. In the second hour, we go into the vault. And inside the vault, we stop streaming on all the traditional platforms. We go right into the vault. And the reason we go to the vault is twofold. For legal reasons, I give away the money there. I give away the uh, uh, guaranteed 10 ounces of pure silver there. Someone's going to win. Ask me the most interesting question. Get voted on by your peers, and you could win 10 ounces of pure silver. We had a number of callers on Friday. Voting is now closed. It was a close battle on Friday for Friday's 10 ounces of pure silver. And uh, on Friday, Tim Sela, uh, you won. Sela, S-A-L-E-H, Tim Sela, you won. Uh, congratulations, 10 ounces of pure silver. I prefer to hand the silver to people in person at Turning Point. You also have two tickets to Turning Point. Come join me in Las Vegas on the 11th through the 13th of March next month. We'll be doing a Turning Point at the Alexis Park Hotel. I would love to have you there. Brand new Mercedes-Benz sedan or SUV up for grabs, plus anybody you refer to the show that buys any of our products course, you get a 30% commission on all those people. So all sorts of great things going on. Phenomenal way for you to learn great education, make some good money, meet great people, join a phenomenal community. So head over to studiomoney.info forward slash the vault and get your free membership so that you can be sure to have access to the vault when we make the transition at the top of the hour. Without any further ado, I would like to welcome our guest for today's show that I'm extremely excited about. I have known about this gentleman for a long time. And I have been excited to meet him in general, let alone get him on the show. And we had a guest last week that ends up being a close contact of this man. And so the universe works in awesome ways. Russell Gray is, a, is one of the hosts on a phenomenal podcast. If you're not listening to, you really want to listen to it, called The Real Estate Guys, where they talk about all things real estate related investing, financing, you know, all the trouble steps that you could take to save you a boatload of money, a boatload of anguish, make you money and keep you involved in a very powerful community. Uh, Russ Gray is a financial strategist with a background in financial services dating back all the way to when, Russ, when Erica was born in 1986. He's a faculty member of the California Association of Realtors. Uh, he's also taught for the real estate, uh, finance to realtors, author of numerous books and a popular author and speaker. Phenomenal guy. I had the great pleasure of speaking to him at length. The moment I, I heard him open his mouth and, and realized how spot on and how kind he is, I said, I got to get this guy on Marshall Silver Live. Without any further ado, please, in the chat, give us a big and cordial welcome to Russell Gray, a great friend from the Real Estate Guys podcast on radio and on your digital delivery system. Russ, welcome to the show. Thanks, Marshall. Excited to be here. And I'm a little embarrassed after that glowing introduction. So thank you. Well, you're funny and you're, you're clearly too modest. So glad to have you here. You are in uh, sunny Arizona right now. I am. Awesome. And, uh, and uh, tell me how long, obviously, a lot of people have been listening to the Real Estate Guys podcast. You guys are one of the original podcasts. How long has that podcast been on the air? So it's really interesting because I didn't start out with it. Uh, the founder of the show, Robert Helms, a host of the show, started it with uh, another partner as Terrestrial Radio in 1997 in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I heard it uh, when I was cruising around Silicon Valley, um, 
looking to make changes in my life and had a fledgling mortgage business. And I heard it in 2001, ended up going to a seminar and that's where I met Robert. Uh, I began doing some consulting with him. I had this idea for a financial education company. I was looking for faculty. Uh, and so he and I started working on that together in 2002. Uh, fast forward just over two years, in the summer of 2004, the original co-host of the show uh, resigned. And Robert said, hey, uh, you want to step in temporarily <laughs> uh, to be my co-host? And I said, sure. And of course, that was nearly 20 years ago. So it's been a wild ride. I mean, obviously, we started in the, in the run-up before 2008, and then we went through the crash of 2008, and then the next run-up. So uh, I'm happy to have been part of that cycle, learned a lot, met a lot of very cool people. Uh, in fact, to a degree, even though we'd never met face to face, uh, you know, we go back a little bit, you yeah. know, because I remember being out there on the circuit, seeing you uh, doing all the great things that you've been doing. So it's really a thrill to be here. Thank you. I'm glad I had no idea that the broadcast, because obviously it started off on terrestrial radio, then you guys moved digital. I had no idea it was over 20 years old. That's remarkable. Yeah, no, it, what happened is uh, we were syndicated uh, nationally uh, through our the the producer that we had talked about over the weekend and yep. so uh, we were that was all being funded by advertising and then the advertising drew up uh, uh, dried up because of the real estate crash and the right. producer couldn't fund the show anymore and so he was asking us to write these really big checks and we were like mm, we're, we can't do that and he said well have you ever have you ever thought about podcasting I didn't even know what a podcast was. And so we were podcasting, I think, for a year or two before I even knew what a podcast was personally. Yep. And then uh, I took over actually running the the back end of the show at the end of 2009 and really focused on turning it into a prim our primary business. And uh, that started in 2010. So I, I'd say probably podcasting since since 2008. We've been on the radio since 1997. We actually just came off the radio after all these years. We finally terminated that contract because uh, the, the future's, you know, really podcasting. I would agree. You know, I have a friend of mine. I, I've been in broadcast since I was 17 years old. So, you know, or what, how long ago is that? Gosh, more than I'd like to acknowledge. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so what is that? 44 years ago, I was on the air with a radio station called FM 104 KJOY beautiful and relaxing music to have your teeth drilled by. And I've always loved broadcast, but terrestrial broadcast, as we know it, radio, television, even print, as we know it, is a dinosaur now. It's going away. And broadcasts like this one, like the real estate guys, like uh, uh, Joe Rogan, you know, obviously we talked about Gary V. We talked about some of the, the other broadcasters. That's where everything is because people have such a short attention span that they're not able to consume the way they used to consume. So back to, you know, the point of this, uh, you, you're in Arizona. You used to live in California. I'm guessing that you, you travel a bit. Yeah. So, so give us a little back, more background, obviously, than the, the introduction that I gave you. Give us a little more background on exactly who you are and what you do before we dive into the hard questions. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of an interesting story. I was born in Silicon Valley. I'm the son of an immigrant. Uh, his family fled Japanese-occupied Philippines, and he uh, won a scholarship to Stanford University, so very smart, diligent guy. Um, Does that mean you're part Filipino? I am part Filipino. So are my children. Really? Well, there yeah, you go. Yeah, my wife's half, half Filipino. Yeah. So I, and, and what I didn't understand, uh, because my dad, uh, you know, is, is stoic, more stoic, like I think a lot of the older generation uh, is. And so we didn't talk a lot, but he showed me a lot with his attitude and his example. And A, he was entrepreneurial. But the other thing he was, he was extremely patriotic. He understood what tyranny looked like. He understood uh, the value of freedom. And he imparted a lot of that to me. And of course, freedom is the foundation of capitalism. And, you know, we could go down a whole discussion of that because I have a lot of energy on that topic. But so uh, he he started a high tech company in uh, in the 1980s. At the same time, I had moved down from northern California to southern California because I was just trying to figure my life out. And his younger brother took me under his wing and put me in outside sales in L.A. So here I'm the small time 
a small town kid from Cupertino, California, pre-Apple, pre-Silicon Valley, just orchards. And I'm down there in, you know, La La Land, uh, you know, out there in outside sales at 18, 19 years old. But I bought a piece of property. I started a business and I ended up making more money in equity in 18 months than both my wife and I made working full time. And so I learned a couple of really valuable lessons. One, the power of having a mentor and learning in the real world much, much better than college. And number two, I learned the power of equity and that you could make a lot of money fast if you focused on really developing equity. And so uh, I sold both of those things and moved back to Northern California. And I thought I was all that in a bag of chips, as they say, uh, promptly lost all my money and made a thousand mistakes and had all kinds of personal issues. Uh, but but then I, I got back on track and we bought a, a rental property and got our first rental property. It was interest rate was like 13 or 14 <laughs> percent. And uh, I made a fatal error. I sold the property and took the equity and put it into a failing business. And I didn't learn the lesson about firewalls. I was all in all the time. I think the way true entrepreneurs are, you know, there's you burn the bridges and all that sounds good in a motivational talk. Uh, but in the real world, I think it's wise to actually um, have a plan B, a plan C, to have firewalls between your assets. And so there's many, many, many lessons I've learned over the years. Uh, but I, I had that experience. I went into the financial services business after that, got my life insurance license. I was selling securities in the eighties and my dad at the same time was just taking his company public. And here's where the two stories converge in 1987, in June of 1987, my dad took his company public. He became on paper, uh, an eight figure multimillionaire and he had what uh, you call the 120 day lockout before he could actually liquidate that his underwriters decided to do him a favor and uh, allowed him to get a margin loan, a very small half a million dollar margin loan on a eight figure uh, portfolio. And we had a great Christmas. It was fantastic. He was just waiting until the lockout period ended in November of 1987. Well, what happened on October 19th of 1987 yeah. is the stock market took a dump. Uh, he got called out of his margin. He had no money. He got a tax bill for a phantom capital gain and it ruined him. And I'm, I was selling securities at the time. I was a registered representative and I looked at that and I said, I, I can't do this. I obviously, I don't understand this at all. How could, how could a man who was smart enough to get into Stanford on academic qualifications, start a company, take it public, become a multimillionaire, have advisors all around him, be completely wiped out in a day and not even see it coming. Like, how could that happen? And so that was that was the beginning of a big uh, turn for me. Uh, and I won't bore you with the rest of the details. We have a lot of other things we can talk about. But I, 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 I came out of that with a bit of a disdain for Wall Street. And 20 years later in 2008, when I got wiped out, similarly, when the mortgage industry crashed and I was in the thick of that, uh, my disdain just doubled down. And so my mission in life is to empower people and educate people Main Street, investing in Main Street. We homeschooled our children. That's something else you and I have in common. Yeah. So uh, I just think there's better ways than some of these, uh, maybe what you'd call legacy or mainstream institutions. And I, I'm very happy to have the freedom in media now to add my voice to the uh, huge army of voices that are out there sharing good ideas. And now it's not about who controls the distribution channel. Uh, it's really who has the best messaging. And that's the way agree. it should be. I agree. Content is king now. And uh, to a degree, actually, because obviously we still, you and I share the experience that we both are patriots. We both love our country. We both uh, despise. And, and now that I know a little more of your backstory, I understand why I have the same experience. You know, I watched the government destroy my father. And uh, my father and I never had a close relationship. I always had massive empathy, though for what I saw the government do to him on a bunch of levels. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, people that, that have an opinion, people that, you know, choose sides, if it's not the side they want you to choose, are destroyed. Obviously, we're watching it big time right now with, with President Trump. Yeah, We're watching it. We're watching it on a lot of levels. We're seeing, you know, I just saw a reporter who reported on January 6th, just got arrested by the FBI. And it's a complete shakedown. It's, it's criminal activity both the FBI and the DOJ and what they're doing. 
So I, I, I guess let's start there. Let's dive in there because we've got a lot of common ground there. How do people, uh, what would you suggest for people to survive during these times? And it feels like we're being attacked on all fronts. I remember back in 1994, I had my first stellar year. I made $22 million net in one year, going from, you know, maybe a few hundred thousand a year before. And so I had a whole lot of money and I knew that I was going to get, you know, taxed on it. I was celebrating in Hawaii and I was reading a book by Senator Roth of Roth IRA. And the book is called The Power to Destroy. And what the book was about was about the IRS. And it was about the IRS and how it functioned, at least even back then in 1994, how it functioned kind of like a used car salesman. And that the IRS, a lot of people don't know this, they don't attack poor people. They don't bother going after broke people because broke people have no money. There's no point in going after broke people. What people don't know is they don't go after rich people either. The reason they don't go after rich people isn't because they're all on the inside. The reason the IRS as an entity, and usually, again, we're seeing something way different right now, but usually they don't attack wealthy people because wealthy people can defend themselves. It's those middle ground people, the middle income people, middle, uh, you know, middle America that they, they could defend themselves, but it would cost a lot of money. And I'm guessing your dad was probably right in there at middle America. Um, and that's where my dad was. He was a hard working person that the government decided one day he owed a huge tax bill that he'd never earned the money. And then they came down on him and ended up garnishing 100% of his wages for years, made it impossible for him to exist. So how do we protect ourselves? You know, how do you protect yourself? I, I know, you know, on a subtle level, I, I do a lot of things. I don't really own anything. I I live in Las Vegas. That is where I live. I love Nevada and I love Las Vegas. And then I, I travel, you know, and right now one of my homes is on the beach in San Diego. But my main residence is Vegas, partly for protection uh, and, and mostly just because of all the other benefits. What do you do to, you know, really be sure you're operating and, and not putting yourself up to lose everything like your dad did and like my dad? Yeah, I, I think that it it's not easy. I think everybody would like it to be easy. It's like if someone comes to you and they're overweight and they want you to give them a pill or a prescription or some surgery that'll magically make them fit, uh, just life doesn't work that way. So if you're serious about it, the first thing you really have to do is begin to get educated. You have to get around people who are working on solving the same problems. You got to read books and listen to podcasts. There's plenty of information out there. So there's no reason why anybody who's serious about wanting to organize their affairs in such a way that they have a better chance of surviving come what may. And there's plenty of us that have been through the ringer that are happy to share. And so to me, that's where it starts. The second thing is understanding structure. There's two ultimate places that uh, where ownership of any asset terminates. It either terminates with a natural individual, a human being, or an irrevocable trust. And when you understand that basic concept, then you can use trusts as a way, especially international trusts, as a way to diversify out of different jurisdictions and to get assets completely out of your name. Uh, for the younger folks out there, they can go look up the Kennedy family and they can look up specifically Ted Kennedy, who ended up uh, with a young lady in his car, drove off a bridge. She drowned. He, she died. And he, his family was sued. But when they went through the process, they found out the Kennedys didn't own anything but they had control of a lot of things. And so it's that basic concept of understanding it's not ownership that you want, it's beneficial use. And so there's lawyers out there that specialize in helping to create these structures. Of course, you have to know how to operate them because if you create a structure like that and don't operate it properly, then you end up just like with a, a securities offering, we teach people how to raise capital and make offerings using a Reg D exemption. But if you do something that violates the exemption, you lose the protection. So it's that same kind of concept. And then the other thing is, I think the, the old concept of a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I didn't understand how to do this until after 2008. It was the pain of like, what should I have done? What should I have been watching? I understood how to do strengths and opportunities. I didn't understand how to do weaknesses and threats. And so I didn't really understand the way the system worked. That was problem number one. Problem number two is I didn't understand how dependent I was on certain aspects of it. When I was in the mortgage brokerage business, I brokered credit. That's how I made my money. Uh, 
And because I didn't believe that holding cash was a good investment, uh, I didn't have any. I used credit lines to operate my businesses. Uh, and so I would generate cash from brokering credit and I would use the cash to pay off the credit lines I used to run my business. Meanwhile, I'm out there accumulating all kinds of top line real estate using the cash flow from my business. In other words, owning negative uh, cash flowing properties, not making the properties pay for themselves. I put the business and the properties in one singular portfolio, me, and said, well, I got cash flow from my businesses and I got long term equity growth from my my properties. Well, of course, what I didn't realize is that the value, the equity in my properties was dependent upon a healthy credit market continuing to pump lots of more purchasing power into the real estate market. When the credit markets broke, it took real estate equity with it. Now I had negative cash flow properties with no equity. I couldn't sell I, to pay off the debt. I had a brokerage business that couldn't place any loans because every company that we placed business with was out of business. So I had no cash flow. And then I looked in the bank and I had no cash. So I was very dependent upon a financial, a piece of financial infrastructure, and I didn't see that. So my point of that is that you have to look at what really makes your life work and say, what am I really dependent upon and how can I begin to mitigate that risk? And then the other thing is, is understanding what real wealth is. Kiyosaki, and you've been on stage with him many times, as have I, and his, one of his signature concepts is cash flow, the idea that buy low, sell high isn't how you make money. It's owning productive assets that pay you to own them. And so he says, your house isn't an asset. I don't care that you paid 100,000. It's now worth a million. It's not an asset. Your car is not an asset. I don't care that it's worth $100,000 with no debt on it. It's not producing any income. That's his basic premise. So real wealth is wealth that is resilient. Rents, you know, interest on debt backed by a quality asset, royalties on things that are being used, whether it's oil, gas, intellectual property, whatever it is, that's real wealth. And so uh, Ken McElroy, who is uh, Robert Kiyosaki's investment partner, uh, really specializes in preaching that and practicing that in terms of real estate. So make sure that what you're calling wealth, if you look at your 401k statement or you look at your balance sheet, and, and I give it to you this way, Silver. If, if, if oh, Marshall, sorry. Okay. <laughs> if, if you okay, have, uh, I was looking at your your name there. Um, if you have somebody that's got a five million dollar property and zero debt and zero passive income, or somebody that's got a three million dollar property with two million dollars of debt and fifty thousand dollars a year of passive income, well, you have to say who's richer? Well, on assets minus liabilities equals net worth. The five million dollar property minus no debt is $5 million net worth. That person's richer, but they can't even buy the groceries. They can't pay the electric bill. They can't mow the lawn. Right. The person in the $3 million property with $50,000, $2,000 of $2 million of debt has a million dollar net worth, far poorer on their balance sheet, but they have $50,000 of usable money coming in every year. So in all the ways that really matter, they're actually wealthier. So you have to begin to change, you know, the understanding what, what that wealth is and build a balance sheet that actually pays you to own it. And so, and then, and then learning how to be outside the dollar uh, and outside the financial system. Gold is a way to do that. It's kind of a safe base. When I was a kid, I used to play tag. And, and when you got tired of running around and you needed a break and you wanted to be safe, you'd go stand at home base because now right. you were invincible. Well, to me, you want to step outside of a fragile banking system. You want to step outside of a falling currency. You want to go to home base and wait and see well, what's going to happen. Gold is a place to go. And you can, if you've been following gold, you can see that more and more people are beginning to go. There, Even Costco and Walmart are beginning to sell gold to Main Street. So people are beginning to wake up to it. And I think that people who haven't woken up to it yet and they wake up too late, uh, you you can't fabricate gold out of thin air. There's only so much to go around. And if you're on the uh, late to the party crowd, you're you're going to pay a big price. Well, I think that's the challenge is that a lot of people don't realize, you know, you got a treasure map. A lot of other people have ever, already used the treasure map. It shows where X marks the spot. And X marks the spot, That that that's the end outcome of us being financially independent. And most people don't realize that your job is not to pay your bills. Your job is not to make sure that you know, all your needs are met. Your job is to figure out what dollar amount that is in your current lifestyle and then figure out how do you passively, without, without having to you know, trade hours for dollars or sweat equity, how do you passively take care of that nut every single month? When you reach that point, you've got financial freedom. But I think a lot of the challenge that people have 
and you talked about this a moment ago, is they don't know what their destination is. They really don't. They don't realize, uh, you know, for me, as, as horrible as it is, I've got a hundred thousand dollars a month in nut, you know, just expenses for living. I, I live expensively. I admit it. I've got a great house in Vegas. I, I have a beautiful house on the beach in San Diego. I like driving nice cars and flying in private jets. I have a fair amount of employees. So that hundred thousand dollar nut, that that is the amount. If I, if I go to sleep and don't work, then next month I'm a hundred thousand dollars in debt. I got an extra hundred thousand in bills. So let's talk about different ways people can invest. And you know, obviously, um, we're about the same age. When we were young, when we were kids, the savings and loan uh, dilemma came up. And I remember, I think I was 17, 16, 17, 18, right in there. I had a buddy of mine who owned like 300 pieces of real estate. And he was, you know, maybe five years older than me. He was a young guy, but he owned a lot of real estate and thought, man, I wish I was him. And I remember when the savings and loans failed. And one day I ran into him and he was a different guy. He was massively depressed. They said, what's happened? He said, I went bankrupt. I said, how did you go bankrupt? You had 300, you know, 300 properties. He said, I was too leveraged. Yep. And I think that a lot of people don't realize I went through something similar myself in 2013. I was massively leveraged. And in due respect, you know, the new administration came in, Obama came in, things changed, and a whole lot of people got hurt in 2011, 2012, 2013. Right in that period, a lot of money was lost. And then obviously in our current circumstances, uh, you know, during Trump, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. I don't even care who you like. Anybody that denies the, the finances in the United States were substantially better. Well, Trump was in office is just either a liar or an idiot or or has Trump derangement syndrome. But now we're back in this current administration in a place where our finances are up in the air again. And we've got to learn new things. That's what the point of this show is. We've got to create new strategies. And regardless of what's going on in the world, we still have to stay in the game. That said, what part of the real estate game, and there's so many ways to play, obviously, fix and flip, wholesaling, you know, commercial properties, uh, multi, whatever. What do you think are some of the best real estate opportunities in the current climate? So I, I think fundamentally you need to understand that inflation isn't a bug, it's a feature. The Federal Reserve on their website overtly says their target okay. is to steal 2% of your purchasing power every year, year in and year out. And I just did a presentation on this the other night. If you look at a chart since 1990, they've outperformed. In other words, they've taken more than 2%. And so this is the it's the ironic you, that you say two percent because that's the target in the casinos too. <laughs> no, I that's mean a, it. That, that's the, that yeah. I'm in Vegas. That's the target in the casino. You walk into a casino and it says on top of the slot machines, ninety eight percent payback, because that's way better than saying two percent guaranteed loss. Yeah, and you know that arbitrage that the government takes, that arbitrage that the treasury and and frankly the casinos take is they want you to think you're winning. That's why the casinos aren't, you know, 100% loss. Because if everybody that walked into a casino walked in, put it down, lost it immediately, nobody would play. The illusion that we're winning is what the casino wants. And that's also what the feds want for us. So tell us more. Well, so let's go there for just a moment because you bring up a great point. Usually I have a, a, a little tinfoil hat that I put on when I go down this path. But if you really think about it, people don't even really understand what wealth is. And I didn't. I thought it was equity. I love equity, but equity should be a byproduct of income, not speculation. If the only reason you're going to get a higher price down the road is because somebody's going to be dumber than you and you know the greater fool theory, pay more than you for the same income or the same asset, then that isn't really uh, an investment. What you're really looking for is to invest for income. But the people who run the system understand that income is real wealth. And so they work very hard to indebt you. They tax you, they go into debt, they issue bonds that you guarantee, then they use a the taxing authority to create that. The banks loan you money out of money they borrow or create out of thin air. And so we are all running around trying to create equity on our balance sheet. We want to buy a stock low, have it go up. We want to buy a piece of real estate low, have it go up. Those values are based on comparative samplings. In other words, it's not based on real absorption. If, if, if you have a economy with a million dollars total money in it and you have 10 houses that are equally 
just 100% equal and uniform, and those are the only products, and that's the only money, then if you just do the math, a million dollars divided by those 10 houses means each house on average is worth $100,000, and there's plenty of money in the economy for that to be true. But because they don't all come for sale at one time, one enterprising person works in that economy and he accumulates a couple hundred thousand dollars, and maybe a couple other people have $50,000, so they don't have as much, but they all own homes. One person decides to sell their home, and they list it for $200,000. And the person who has the $200,000 goes, yeah, I want that home. And so they pay the $200,000. The only person that $200,000 price tag is true for is the person who actually collected the cash when they sold it. But you know what? The other nine people all think their house is worth how much? $200,000. So now you've got 10 properties or 10 owners that all think their houses are worth $200,000, which would be a $2 million economy. And there's only a million dollars in circulation. That's fake wealth. And our system is full of fake wealth. Now, you compare that to an apartment building. And if you use that same uh, logic, it, it would be so illogical. It's obvious. If I've got 1,000 units for rent, 999 of them are empty. They're not being sold. And one person rents for $1,000. And I say, well, based on comparative sampling, based on the comps, all these other units are worth 1,000. But they're not in the real world. And so no bank is going to lend you uh, you know, whatever the, the loan is, they're not going to lend you on those uh, 10,000 or 1,000 units at, at $1,000 a month, right? So when, when the income in, in uh, the world, rents uh, are, are real, loan payments, that's real. So if you understand that to, to really, um, you don't want to get snookered into the casino by believing the hype that this fake wealth, this this equity they put on your balance sheet to make you feel wealth so you will more readily give them true wealth, which is to go into debt and pledge yourself to monthly payments. So you got to get up every day, borrower, servant to the lender, right? If you want to get out of that, then you need to get on the other side of the equation and focus your investing on purchasing cash flow. Stocks that earn real profits and you're paying you real dividends from their profits and real estate that is paying real rents and notes against real estate that's paying you real income, and you begin to stack up this real income. Real estate, because of the nature of inflation, is the ideal basis of what I call a real asset portfolio, because it naturally benefits from inflation, which in itself is a hedge, both on the price side, the equity side, and also on the income side. Rents are very sticky. It's the biggest component of CPI right now is ri rising rents. But it also allows you to use debt, which means you can short the dollar. I can spend today's dollars today, but I don't have to pay them back till tomorrow. And so anybody that's ever bought a property, put $20,000 down on a $100,000 property, get an $80,000 loan. A few years later, that property's worth $500,000. And you still only have a $80,000 loan. The inflation has, has deflated your debt. And makes you partners with the people that control the system that are heavily in debt. They inflate the economy to lessen the burden on themselves of their debt. The only way to come alongside that, because you can't change it. Right. The only way to, is, to come, is to come alongside it and make debt work for you. And the best way to get sa the safest, not safe, but the safest debt is real estate. So we talked about being over leveraged. Over leveraged is when you're using debt and you do not pay attention to the cash flow. That's what I did. I counted on my business, which was cash flowing like crazy, to supplement my real estate, which was not cash flowing because I was overpaying and over encumbering, but I didn't care because I thought I had it covered based on my business. But to your point, it puts a huge burden on me as an entrepreneur to get up every day and grind, grind, grind at that grindstone to float that nut. And you can't expand a portfolio like that because it becomes too much of a burden on you, even if you're a high earner. So it's really a matter of segregating your business life and using it to create income, credit, and savings, and then leveraging that credit into purchasing income and debt. And the tool you use to do that is real estate. You're not investing for the real estate. It's the debt and the income that you want. It's the debt and the income you need to manage. If you take your eye off that ball, you can get sideswiped. And it happens to a lot of people. Sounds like it happened to your friend. Yeah, it happened to me. 100% happened to me. We, we were flourishing. And I had a very similar circumstance. Uh, you know, back in 2013, we were rolling. 
in cash. The businesses were flourishing. And then obviously the economy made a slight shift in 2012, 2013, 2014, right in there. And I just got caught unaware. And sometimes I think people have too much of their identity tied into their wealth and their money and how much money they have in a given moment. And 1000% for me, you know, I met my wife that I love very much. Best decision I ever made in my life. She's 24 years younger than me because I'm a really good hypnotist. But even then, you know, as much as I know that my wife loves me, there was a, a part of me that was concerned that she loved me partly for my money. That, you know, part of the reason she was attracted to me, I'm wealthy. She has this amazing lifestyle. And so one day I came to her and I said, we're screwed. I said, if we sell everything, I still owe millions of dollars. You know, we are, I'm over leveraged right now. The economy has shifted. Uh, you know, things are not going the way that I had anticipated. I feel really stupid. I said, but I think we got to sell everything. My beautiful bride said, I don't care if we sell it. I don't care if we live in a studio apartment at the time with the two boys. Uh, she said, all I want to do is be with you. And it was like God had blessed me and said, okay, now, you know, your wife actually loves you for you. She's willing to stick around during hard times, which she did. And, and I, I again, I think that that's the first thing that, that a lot of people don't realize is that wealthy people, whether, you know, it's Robert Kiyosaki, uh, who both of us know, and I know you're close friends with Robert. I'm, I'm not a close friend of his. I'm very familiar. We've shared the stage many times. You know, uh, sometimes people take a look at Robert or Tony or Gary V or Grant Cardone, and they forget that these are human beings. I remember early on in my career, a point where Tony was almost bankrupt and he had to sell one of his, he had to sell his residence at the time. And it was just a matter of, yeah, that's life. That's business. The key clearly is to get far enough ahead that, that even when the setbacks occur, we're not set back. So let's talk about a topic you kind of just mentioned, and that is home ownership. Now, there's a lot of different schools of thought. You know, if you go down the Dave Ramsey or the, the uh, Susie Orman path, you know, they, they say no debt. And, you know, you, you want to own your house free and clear and you don't want to owe anybody anything. And, don't give your kids credit cards. And I happen to think they're both full of crap. I happen to think they're both really bad sources of advice. And I don't mind going on the record of saying that although both of them are wildly popular, I also don't think that they are actually sound financial advice. Back to one topic that I've challenged with, um, I'm at a point where I don't see any real benefit in personal home ownership. I, I'm to a place where it just doesn't make any sense and, you know, now we're getting more and more people, Elon Musk's, and I, I even saw, who doesn't own a home, I even saw that Grant Cardone the other day said, there's no point in owning your own home. Let somebody else rent a home from you. Yeah, that's great. But you should be renting a house. Because if you rent a house, you know, away go all the headaches and all the stuff that goes with ownership, but all the benefits of being able to live where you want are still there. What are your thoughts on home ownership for personal consumption? So uh, I think that what you're doing is making a compelling pitch for Kiyosaki's rich dad, poor dad, because that's his basic premise. Uh, if it doesn't put money in your pocket, it's a liability. And so when you make the decision about home ownership, uh, you have to realize it comes with a lot of responsibilities. Now, if you have to pay rent, you have to say, well, what's a better value paying rent or having a home? And I think you have to do the math. So I don't think it's black or white. Um, but I do say that if you have the opportunity to live uh, very flexibly and below your means while you're busy organizing that stream of passive income, again, a shout out to Robert Kiyosaki if you've ever played his game Cash Flow. When you play that game, you realize that if you pull the card, you, you decide who your avatar is going to be. If you're the doctor or the lawyer who makes a lot of money but spends a lot of money, it's actually harder to get out of the rat race and generate enough passive income to cover your lifestyle than it is if you're, you have a more modest lifestyle to support. So I, I would be an advocate of maintaining a more modest lifestyle while you're aggressively working on taking all your available capital. And I saw the clip that you're talking about with Grant Cardone. That's basically what he's saying. Uh, I agree with that. As far as uh, Susie Orman and, and Dave Ramsey, I think that for their avatar, who they're talking to, there are people, I don't need to tell you this, you know more about human nature than me, but there are people who just psychologically um, aren't really cut out or willing to be an entrepreneur or an investor. It's extreme ownership. 
there's a degree of risk. Uh, you have to really be diligent in learning and being humble. You can't interject your emotions or even your political proclivities, right? It's like, it shouldn't be this way. Well, guess what? It is. It is. And the system yeah. is corrupt. That's right. But, but you still have to live in it. So it doesn't really matter what you think or how you feel. You've got to read and react to what is. And for people who struggle with that level of ownership, they shouldn't be in debt. They should leave a very small conservative lifestyle. And I think that that's fine for them. But if you want to be more, have more, do more, if you want to be a job creator instead of a job seeker, if you want to be a true capitalist and take advantage of the wonderful freedoms and opportunities, even though they're eroding, but that we still have, then uh, then you're going to make heavy use of debt. But you've got to be smart about it, as we talked about. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's black and white. I think it starts with a good look in the mirror and asking yourself, who are you really? And if you're not who you need to be, are you truly willing to change? Get around people that are like the person you need to be and ask yourself, can I see myself being them or being like them? Can I see myself believing the things they believe and behaving the way they behave and living with the ups and downs? I mean, to your point, you know, I was married for 41 years before my late wife passed and we, we had a lot and then we had nothing. And, you know, you find out who your friends are, you find out who you are. And <laughs> if I wouldn't have seen my dad lose his self-worth when he lost his net worth, I probably would have conflated the two also because yep. we were exactly the same age. He was 47 when he lost everything. I was 47 when I lost everything 20 years later. But I drew from watching him and I realized that and I made a vow to myself, actually, when I saw it happen, I go, you know, I don't know that it's ever going to happen to me. I hope it doesn't. But if I ever get knocked off the horse that badly and I lose everything, I am I'm going to realize I'm actually smarter, more experienced. I'm every bit as good as I was before it happened and better because it happened. And if you can frame it that way, then you can get back on the horse. You can go back and get back in the game. But you got to have that kind of mental toughness and you have to look at your life and ask yourself, am I willing to be that kind of person? If you are, then I think that uh, Main Street investing, Main Street capitalism, using debt to short the dollar and control assets and be hyper responsible for managing cash flow uh, can work real well for you. I would agree. You've got uh, two programs I want to talk about. Uh, one is you have the Investor Summit at Sea, and that is Investorsummit at Sea.com. And that's happening in June. And tell us about the cruise and tell us how many people you expect on the cruise, what types of people would be on the cruise. Because I know we've got a lot of people that are my listeners that, that are both real estate investors, but also love cruises. So tell me about the cruise. Yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity. It's the brainchild of Robert Helms. He came up with this thing in uh, 2002 in uh, January. I remember I was in the room when he did it. He went to lunch, came back and pitched it. Everybody bought it. We're like, wow, this is this is a deal. So that's how fast an entrepreneur can innovate. Uh, by by the April, we were on a cruise ship. Uh, so what we do is we get together for a couple of days, a day or two in a hotel, do some uh, on the ground seminar stuff. Then we get on the cruise ship. And when we're at sea, we're doing classrooms and we're networking and we're doing parties together and we're having dinner together, building relationships, talking about the subject matter that we've discussed during the day. And by the, it, it, it we, we call it sub, summer camp for uh, investors, for adults, because you, you get on the ship as strangers and you go home with these really deep connections. And for people who care about networking and really understanding a diverse group of people, where they're coming from, the businesses they're in, the markets they invest in, how they look at life, you can get more done in one week than most people get done in 10 years for a lot less money. Um, it's not cheap. But it's fantastic. And so over the years, we've had Robert Kiyosaki, I think, probably at least 10 times. Kenny McElroy, uh, his real estate guy, will be there uh, with us. And uh, Peter Schiff. I saw one of, one of the guests you have, Tommy Hopkins. Tommy Hopkins, become a good friend of mine. Yeah, right here in You know what? I tell Tommy, I said hello. I haven't seen Tommy in a couple decades. But I used to share the stage with him uh, and Zig Ziglar and yeah. Ryan Tracy all during the Peter Lowe days. Yes, Yep, yeah, and so I, I, I miss Tommy. Days. You tell him I said hello. I'm one of his biggest fans. I was sitting um, in the dressing room with Tommy one day, and Ed McMahon was one of the other speakers on the roster. And we're all back in the green room, and Ed McMahon had a wife that was like 30 years younger than him. And Ed was back there in the in the dressing room, along with his wife and along with his in-laws, 
who were still about 10 years younger than him. And uh, Tommy looked at me and I looked at Tommy and, and I was in my early 20s, way before my current circumstance. And he said, you think I'm a good salesperson? That's a good salesperson. <laughs> Tom, yeah, Tom, Tom actually changed my life. I was in corporate sales, uh, struggling in my 20s and the 80s. And uh, somebody handed me How to Master the Art of Selling by Tom Hopkins. And I must have listened to those tapes 100 times driving around Silicon Valley. And when I finally had a chance to meet him, uh, and I began, you know, kind of like using his technique on him, you, you know, he showed up at the studio and he says, hello, I'm Tom Hopkins. I said, yes. And I'm Russell Gray. We had an appointment at two 30, tap my watch and it's two 30. That's a Tom Hopkins technique. Yep. And he laughed and we had a good laugh, but he's come on the cruise many times, become good friends with his wife. Um, he and his wife, Michelle. And so, yeah, just, so Tommy's going to be there. Uh, like I said, Peter's going to be there. Uh, Kenny's going to be there. We have a whole bunch of people that probably aren't super well known, but they're brilliant Main Street investors, people that really have had great success. Uh, it's not just about real estate. We we talk about bigger picture stuff. We talk about economics. We talk about the bond market and interest rates because that drives a lot of real estate investing. We talk about um, the banking system. We talk about energy, which is a very important input. Um, we talk about, I'm sure we'll be talking this year about the political environment because we're going to be neck deep in it by June when we sail. Uh, so it's just a ton of fun. And again, if you, if you care about taking your study of a subject matter deep and learning through uh, listening, but also conversation and clarifying questions with speakers, and if you really care about building your network, uh, I, it's, it's, it's a fantastic return on investment. We have a lot of people coming year in and year out, and we've been doing it for 22 years. Where is the cruise going to this year? Oh, we're going to be sailing out of Fort Lauderdale, and we're going to Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. So regardless of the phenomenal information, sounds like a fun cruise, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you pay a premium to be with us because we you know, are, are putting on the event, so you can't book the cruise and come hang out with us. You got to do it through us. But uh, I think that Again, we, we have so many people that just love it. And we have not been able to be on a cruise ship for the last three years because we got kicked off the cruise ship when the COVID thing happened. And while we were waiting for the cruise ships and to really be sure we had the all clear, uh, we didn't feel like we had that until last year. And it takes a year to plan these things. So finally, last year, we made the decision, yeah, we're going to go back onto a cruise ship in 2024. And we're looking forward to it. That is awesome. Uh, the, the last thing I want to chat about before we wrap up, and thanks so much. It's great to have you here. You're you're such a smart guy, and you're you're down to earth, and I really appreciate your energy. We talked about something when you and I were uh, chatting socially that is near and dear to my heart. Obviously, I love my children. I believe entrepreneurship is the missing link. I think it's the one thing that saves this country, and I think that a lot of people don't recognize uh, how very important it is that our children are not just financially literate, that they're on entrepreneurially literate. They understand how to run a business. They understand the idea. I create something of great value for somebody else. Then they want to, you know, remunerate me and, and enrich my life. So talk to me about raising capitalists. I, I love the name, by the way, raising capitalists, because that's what I want my children to be. I want them to be capitalists. Tell yeah. I'm, I, I'm super excited about it. Actually, I had dinner the other night with uh, Mark and uh, Mark Victor Hansen, his wife, Crystal, and we were talking about the idea. And um, I, there's so many people out there that are embracing homeschooling. We were doing it back in the 80s. So we were kind of, there was only like a million families in the entire country that were doing it. And so I'm happy to say that we raised five kids that are all very entrepreneurial, running their business, never really went and got a day job. And so kind of happy about that. Um, but the idea with raising capitalists, the project is what I've always believed in, that there's brilliance on Main Street. And so there are people out there uh, like my father who raised me and you raising your children. And we're all trying to figure out how do we inspire? How do we educate? How do we lead our young people? And if I thought, man, if somebody could just interview the parent and the child, whatever the age is, if you're 80 and you got a 60 year old child, or if you're 40 and you got a, a 10 year old child or 20 year old child, or if you're 25 and you got a five year old child, whatever it is, you know, if, if you're raising someone to be a capitalist, to be an entrepreneur, to take ownership uh, and, and bet on themselves and their own results, like how do you do that? So the project is that people would uh, answer a questionnaire 
in, in a story form, kind of tell the story of what they're doing, and it would become a chapter. Uh, and it would be one, one perspective written by the parent, another perspective written by the child or from someone who interviewed the child. And then you put the two together and that's a chapter. And it's a collection of these stories. And if it goes really well, the plan then was we would create a podcast around it. And it would just be focused on training parents on how to raise capitalists, understanding what capital is, what capitalism is, what the role of freedom is because you can't have capitalism without freedom and our freedoms, I don't need to tell you, are under attack. And that means our capitalism is under attack, which means our capital is under attack. And so that's the project. I'm super excited about it. It's been on my wish board for quite a while, but I'm getting it out of the ground here in 2024. And over the next year or two, I, I hope to bring it all together. So anybody out there it, it thinks you've got a great idea, you're, you're having good success, or you've had good success raising a capitalist and you want to tell your story, just hit me up. Just uh, send an email to follow at russellgray.com with two L's, R-U-S-S-E-L-L, -S -S -E gray, G-R-A-Y.com. Follow at russellgray.com. And then tell me in it that you're interested in the Raising Capitalists Project. And I'll get back to you and we'll talk about uh, collaborating. Yeah, I think that's a phenomenal idea of both the parent and the kid authoring a chapter inside of the book. I think that's phenomenal because number one, it's a great project to work on together. Number two, now the kid's a published author and the kid can, you know, have that claim to fame, let alone the adult, but the kid can also say, I am also a published author. And then finally, you know, it's, it really is a culture inside of a household. I have a friend of mine and he and I have similar levels of wealth. He's another speaker. We have similar levels of wealth. We're wealthy. And when I go to his house at Christmas time, he has a room that's a pretty substantial room. He puts a Christmas tree in the corner. And his outcome is to fill up the entire floor with gifts. And I think it's bad. I think it's a really bad idea. And, you know, his children, they're, they're good enough kids. They're spoiled to a substantial degree, in my opinion. You know, they just, they don't care. They have, an, they have another room that's a, that's a playroom. And the playroom's all well and good. But the playroom is littered with all the gifts they didn't even open or play with that they got for Christmas. My children, are we're very specific about holidays. Christmas, they get 10 gifts. They don't get 11. They don't get 12. They don't get nine. They get 10. One from Santa, nine from their parents. And the nine gifts they get from mom and daddy, it could be a pair of socks. It could be a t-shirt. And that's a gift, but they get it. My son's birthday was yesterday. We had a birthday party for his friends on Saturday. We had his personal family party yesterday and did some family activity. Uh, he didn't want a cake. And, and, and when I asked him, why don't you want a cake? He just said, it's just no big deal, dad. I don't care. That's the other piece is that, you know, I think that capitalists and, and people that understand how to make money, they don't do things because other people do them. They just don't care the same way. I know I don't. I have everything I want. I, I don't want my wife stressing about what to get me for Christmas or my birthday because I don't want her to stress. And if I want something today, I don't want to wait till May 19th to get it. I want it today. And uh, so, you know, one of the things, the last thing I want to just leave, leave is, um, Besides the cruise, you guys do other live events? Yeah. So I, I mentioned, you know, we try to practice what we preach. In other words, in terms of we want Main Street capitalists and to inspire Main Street capitalists. And so we teach uh, twice a year. We do a seminar called Secrets of Successful Syndication. And it's a two day training to teach people who are interested in learning how to raise private capital primarily to do real estate, but you can raise private capital to do a number of things. We've been doing this for a dozen years, and we've got a couple of our guys that have come through our training that have gone on to raise a billion dollars of capital. There's two of them. And we've got uh, a couple more that have raised in, in the uh, nine figures and lots in the eight figures. And so uh, it, it's, it's proven in its ability to teach people to raise capital. And you know, if you think right now that people are just sending their money off to Wall Street, which is to me a casino, at least if you investing in apartment buildings or self storage centers or car washes or residential assisted living facilities, these are things that are really creating amenities uh, on Main Street and are being uh, creating jobs on Main Street. And the average investor can look at it and understand what it is. And I think they're kind of hungry for it right now. I think they're looking for something real and people, real people to to, to um, do business with. So if, if you're out there and maybe you're an experienced real estate investor and the only thing holding you back from going to the next level is you just need more capital, 
uh, then it's totally the seminar for you. If you've always dreamed of starting your own business and you don't quite know what to do, start a business raising money and you can be like Warren Buffett and then you can go use the money you raise to buy little businesses and you can own several little businesses. Be like Marcus Leonis, be a profit, the profit guy, you know? So it all starts with learning how to raise money. Two days, secrets of successful syndication. You can send an email to syndication at realestateguysradio.com. Syndication at realestateguysradio.com. We'll get you the info. We do it twice a year. Thanks for letting me have, plug that too, by the way, Marshall. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm happy to. Our, our students, they, they're learners. You know, they like attending live events. Obviously, that's who I am. You guys have an event that's called the Fast Track. What is Fast Track? Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, I'm looking at the realestateguysradio.com and you've got a 2024 20, uh, upcoming live and in-person Fast Track events in Phoenix. I, I don't. Oh, oh, I know what that is. That's a residential assisted living academy. So we we don't not only promote our own stuff, but we promote other people's stuff. And so uh, our mutual friend, the late great Gene Garino, created yeah. a um, a training academy based on his success as a residential assisted living investor. And he trains investors, and he's been doing this for a number of years. His family took the business over. They're doing great. And the uh, the the idea is, you come into this training. Uh, and you learn how to take a um, McMansion and turn it into a net $10,000 a month uh, cash flowing business where you're catering to the demographic of baby boomers and their parents who are beginning to get to that season of life where they can't quite live on their own. And your choices are have them move in with you and you take care of them, put them in a big box institution or put them in a home where they have 24 seven care and they are uh, are they become part of a family in a real house on main street. And it, there's a huge need for it. The demographic trend is there as terms of ROI, the return on investment there. And they have a proven track record at teaching people how to do that. So I uh, can go to realestateguysradio.com and just uh, look under our events tab and you'll see that event coming up and you can look at the next upcoming date. Awesome. And how many people usually attend those events? Um, usually about 100 to 150. They do them eight times a year. And are they and usually they, in Phoenix? Yeah, they do at the Phoenix Hilton every time. And Love I'm it. often there. Uh, any any way people can find out more about you? Any, any uh, downloads or anything that you want to make available to anybody? I think for right now, I mean, if people want to follow me and the different projects I'm involved in, I got a couple of different books. I uh, appear regularly on Mike Maloney's uh, Gold Silver podcast. And, uh, you know, I obviously do the Real Estate Guys radio show. So if you just send an email to follow at russellgray.com, then uh, I'll get back to you and let you know all the places I am. And you can unsubscribe. I'm not going to spam you. I'll just let you know how you can connect and whether it's social media, YouTube, podcasting, live events, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing. Uh, you can follow me. Well, you are awesome. You are a joy to be near. I'm going to check and take a look at our schedule and see if I can get on that cruise with you because you got a lot of great names and uh, we love cruising. We love uh, cruising for a reason. I don't really care to cruise unless there's a reason for me to be on that particular boat, but uh, certainly this is one of them. Uh, Russell Gray, thank you so much. We are two guys of a similar color. Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. You are totally loved and thank you for being a great patriot. I look forward to being at one of your events very soon. Take care. Thanks, Marshall. Thank you. You betcha. Life is so good. I, I have the best guests. I really do. And I'm grateful that you are watching this. If you are interested in being a part of today's show, if you want to get on the air and chat with me, studiomoney.info forward slash live guests. And it's a treasure map, baby. Today is your day that you uh, say the secret word. You could potentially win $10,000 cash in the envelope. The secret word is there. I say uh, you must appreciate where you are now because where you're at later will be where you're at now then. Today's show, we're going to give away two turning point tickets to every single person that calls in. Uh, $3,000 a piece. Come join me in Las Vegas. I would love to have you there. Uh, having you in person means that I can get inside your brain. We rewire your subconscious mind and make you an absolute unstoppable entrepreneur or investor. That's something that's interesting to you. I'd like to have that for you. Uh, also, we got an event coming up the 4th through the 7th of March in Las Vegas. And then Turning Point is the 11th through the 13th in Las Vegas. And uh, the event coming up the 4th through the 7th is actually two events. One is called First Million. And it teaches you how to have this your first or best million year ever. And then the other portion of that program is called Irresistible Influence. 
It's a course that teaches you how to sell anybody, anything, at any time. So we're going to jump into the vault. If you have not yet gotten a membership to the show, make sure you do, because uh, we're not going to cut the feeds today, although we're going to start cutting them soon. Could be any day now. So make sure you go to Studio Money. Uh, dot info forward slash the vault and get yourself a free Marshall Silver Live membership to the vault. And then that way you have access to everywhere we go. Coming up after this break, we're going to start taking your calls live. We've got Ramon, uh, Eloise, and John standing by, ready to jump on the show. And I think I told John last week that he would be my first caller. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I think John. Uh, was waiting. So if that was the case, by all means, uh, producer Tom, let's make sure we go to John right after the break. In the meantime, take a look. We'll be right back. Turning point, a total change in direction for the better. Who here is ready for a turning point? You absolutely have to have one. Put them high. The two day turning point seminar is different than any other program in that it does more than just teach you the skills for your relationships, wealth, and power. It also programs you on a subconscious level to put those skills into immediate use. This weekend is about empowerment. This weekend is about you understanding how to take charge of your own life. You will learn total control of your thoughts and emotions, how to use END or psychoneural duplication to take on the thoughts and actions of others to produce similar results. Whether it's losing weight, changing habits, being a millionaire. When you think what a millionaire thinks and you do what a millionaire does, you'll produce similar results. You will learn to program these powerful tools at a subconscious level for immediate and lasting results. Your conscious mind is what's called your critical factor. It's the mind you're using right now to determine whether the information I'm giving to you will work for you or not. Your subconscious mind, on the other hand, is merely a computer. It's non-critical. It doesn't even have the ability to make judgment. So all trance, hypnosis, reprogramming is, is setting aside the critical factor of your conscious mind and non-critically accepting suggestions. And empowering. To make a fear vanish, you must experience it fully. As it helps you create your life exactly the way you want it. Bring your family closer. Find the love of your life. Create strategies for wealth. Learn irresistible influence and so much more. Because of the intimate nature of this course, seats are very limited. Register now before your life passes you by and there are no more turning points for you. Tens of thousands of people have learned this information and are using it daily. You don't get angry if you get fired from your job and you know that within two years you will be a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. It's your time. There's a way for you to win this game that is different than how you're doing it and it works it's your life when you learn how to do that you become more powerful and power is for use it's your turning point Isn't it time for your first million? Wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to do what you love and learn how to monetize that on a seven-figure level? Do you want to know exactly what you need to do and what not to do to have your biggest year ever? If not now, when? First Million. A two-day subconscious learning experience that both teaches and programs you with the personality traits and habits of multimillionaires. At First Million, you'll learn how to take almost any wealth vehicle to a seven-figure level or better. You'll learn how to stop using vehicles that don't work, are too difficult, or simply unsuited for you. Making money is supposed to be fun. Stop living your life, getting ready to live your life, and start living a life of adventure. First Million was crafted to not just change what you do, it's also going to change who you are. Instead of trying to become a millionaire, you'll learn that you're already a millionaire even if the money has not yet been deposited in your bank account. 
Beyond Mindsets, you'll learn the actual personality traits of multimillionaires, so you'll naturally do what millionaires do to produce a similar result. One of the key personality traits of a millionaire is charisma. Imagine being able to walk into a room and without speaking a word, have the entire room drawn to you. Imagine others hanging on your every word, wanting to be near you, to be in business with you, and hungry to buy whatever you're selling. First Million will teach you how to use the charisma that politicians, entertainers, CEOs, and celebrities use to move nations and make millions. You'll also learn how to get more done in less time. You'll learn priority management and what the highest and best use of your time is. You'll learn laser-like focus upon IGAs or income generating activities and you'll learn to let go of anything below your pay grade. What if you had more customers than you ever imagined? What if they came right to you and fought to buy from you? At First Million, you'll learn attraction marketing and strategies to get others to pay you for your marketing and advertising before they even purchase your offer. When you attend your First Million, you'll begin to see an overwhelming amount of amazing opportunities all around you. You'll look through the matrix and easily identify target-rich environments. You'll learn dovetailing and stacking strategies to acquire more customers and do more business with the customers you already have. Unless something is sold, no money is made. Whether you're a sales pro, a novice, or even scared to death of selling something, your first million is going to have you fall in love with influence and enjoy it as the game that it is. When you believe in what you're selling, you're obligated to sell it. You'll learn exact language patterns of influence and persuasion. You'll learn how to get others to ask you for what you're selling and have them believe it was their idea. You'll become dynamically able to use arcing statements, direct links, embedded commands, and so much more. An entire tool belt of selling gambits will be yours after you get to your first million. As a first million alumni, you will be clear on what you need to do to GTFM or get the freaking money. You deserve great wealth and your first million will help to raise your self-esteem around the topic of money. The amount of money you make will always be determined by your own self-image. You'll learn what billion dollar corporations already know about outsourcing, how to get anything below your pay grade done for pennies on the dollar. Your first million will give you the groundwork to understand presentation skills and the highest paid profession on the planet, public speaking. When you graduate from your first million, you'll be able to create presentations that inspire with confidence and power. If all that weren't enough, there's so much more. Making your first million is almost certainly going to require that you manage at least a small team. You'll walk out of the course with the knowledge of how to lead teams and synergistically get more done in less time. Technology has made our lives so much easier as we've learned how to harness it. The First Million course will teach you what is up to date and available in technology so that you can use that cutting edge technology to get more done and have more fun. You'll also learn how to harness the power of the internet for massive passive profits. Every time you attend your First Million, You'll learn new technology and internet marketing strategies as these two portions of the class change every time you attend. It's like getting a brand new seminar each time you come. If you're a representative, you may attend your first million as often as you like, totally free with your enrollment in the first million course. If you're not yet a rep or if you have not yet invested in your first million, enroll now. Everything begins in thought and you know what you want to say, go ahead, say it now, say it out loud. I'm ready for my first million. And K, that's what's at stake today. If you're brand new to the show, you don't know how we do it. We do it, baby. I'm on live two hours a day, Monday through Friday, from 10 a.m. till noon Pacific time. 
first hour, uh, just like we just had, and I was just looking at the comments, Russell Gray, you are loved, man. The uh, the, the, vis- the listenership, the viewership, uh, loved you. Would love to have you back on the show anytime you want. So thanks so much for being a guest today. Uh, during the first hour, we bring in great guests like that. I teach content. So always good to tune in. You just need you know a little bit of coaching. Uh, totally free, no charge whatsoever, no cost to the show. Never will ask you for money. All you got to do is hang out with me. And then in the second hour, you get to do what we're about to do right now. You get to call in studiomoney.info forward slash live guests, plural. Uh, go there, tell them you want to be on the air. And as long as we have space on the air, you could jump on. Uh, it is where you want to be. That is for sure. Wherever you are, that's where you want to be. And uh, on 226, we got 10 grand up for grabs. First guest of the day on the show, and we'll get to as many as we can. I, I, I Over the weekend, I had gotten some emails, and I got two emails on the same topic. And I don't agree with <clears throat> what the two emails said, although I want to share with you what the two emails said. They both said the same thing. They said, we love your guests. Your guests are awesome. We just love you more, basically. And they both said, rather than having guests on, couldn't you do just two hours of Q&A? We may. We may get there. Right now, as we're brand new, I'd like to, I like this format. And I want to keep it going. Yes, Adam Walker. Russell is full of knowledge. He was amazing. And I'm sure we're going to end up being long-term friends. First guest on the show today, John McCrocklin. You are live on the air on Marshall Silver Live. Welcome home. Glad you're here. Were you with me on Friday waiting to get on the air? I was on Thursday. <laughs> That's what I thought. I actually... and I, you're you're no, awesome. I appreciate, I appreciate your stick to Where are you calling in from? Cypress, California. Awesome. What do you do? Uh, right now I work for an insurance company, not happy with that. I've got a job just over broke. Uh, Uh but my girlfriend, Kelsey, uh, who you've spoken with before and I are opening up, uh, a business that works with actors. She is actually a Hollywood agent and I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to work with her getting actors ready to meet agents. So, a couple of questions that I had at first off, before I, I go there, um, I wanted to say the last two weeks have been amazing. So thank you so much. Uh, I went to a turning point 20 years ago, and it, invi- it invigorated me. And I'm not saying that I wasn't a happy person and, a, you know, everything wasn't going great for me. But you really turned me back on to life. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this for us. This is I know this is $60,000 an hour that we would pay just to have you and you're giving it to us for free thank you you know what you uh, schmoozing works with me that that was awesome and yes you're right i i we lose money on every single show production in our giveaways and such we lose money every show and you're right 100 percent. when i contemplated launching the show i just said people need this voice and and whether it was me with this voice or somebody else didn't matter to me people need somebody they can talk to with a level head that will hold them responsible, that won't put up with their BS. You know, I love my children. I love them very much. Oh, yeah. And every once, in a, every once in a while, one of them will get into a fit. They'll get in their head and they'll they'll start throwing a fit over nothing. And I'm very direct. I ask, what do you want? Because if it's a genuine request, that's fine. But the second thing is, if they don't want anything, I say, then knock it off. Not acceptable. We don't act that way. You just don't do well, it. We all, we all want to take our offspring to Nirvana, right? We all we all want to get them there. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's what I want too. I want to leave something for them where they won't just have nothing to worry about for the rest of their lives, but they'll have something that they can work with for the rest of their lives and continue to generate an income for themselves. So yes. my questions so question are. Today? My questions are, uh, my short time goal is to get to first million, obviously, because we're coming to turning point and I want to go to first million. So I need to generate some cash so I can buy those first million tickets from you. I want to be the first one up out of my seat going to that (laughs) you, buying first million and irresistible influence. I want to be that guy. So I need to generate short time cash. What are the best income generating opportunities that you recommend and second question where are the best target rich environments for our type of business and i i know you can't be specific but you can give us hey these are the places to look 
Yeah, I, I can be I can be fairly specific actually. Yes, information marketing is the easiest way to generate revenue with the lowest possible outlay up front. We teach, I teach speakers how to crush it from the platform. We have a program program called MVP. And I, I was watching a documentary the other day about actors and about actors going on calls and you know going on auditions. And it said that the average number of auditions a seasoned actor, a good actor, goes on without getting a part is nine. That they go on nine auditions and get nothing. And and I know the reason I'm not an actor, I don't like rejection. I don't like people telling me no. And so I, I dated, my ex-wife was a, was a model and an actress. And I would go to auditions with her and I would see her come out. And I'd say, how did it go? And she said, I didn't think it went that well. And time after time after time, I watched her do that. And I just said, I don't want to do that. So I got into a profession, entertainment and education, that I'm the boss. I'm the guy doing the hiring, even if I'm hiring myself. And so the answer to your question is twofold. First, if you haven't already, and my guess is you probably have, other people have not. If you haven't downloaded the I am the next multimillionaire.com free audio, make sure you download that free audio. Yes, so sir. everybody watching the show right now, if you haven't gone to I am the next multimillionaire.com, download the free audio there. No cost. That's where it starts. So you want to start there. But then to make money, what do I do? I always stop and say, what do people need? Now, I build on an existing foundation. I would never tell anybody to go into a particular profession or business just to make money unless they loved it. You guys love entertainment. You love entertainers. You love actors. You love people in the business. Here is what I think, without a doubt, 100% what is missing inside of the entertainment world. My son, for his birthday, his 11th birthday yesterday, he wanted an electric guitar. And when I asked him prior, a month prior, what he wanted for his birthday, he said, eh, nothing. I'm okay, Dad. But I could tell by the way he was saying it, something was up. I said, what's going on? He said, eh, what I want is too expensive. And I said, what do you want? He said, I want an electric guitar, but you don't have to get it. It's too expensive. I said, okay. And I just left it alone. I, I went online and I checked. Yeah, guitars can range anywhere from, you know, three, four, five hundred bucks all the way to twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars. They can be expensive. But uh, you know, I, I I knew I didn't want to get my son anything expensive. The point is, is they both are, they're all, all three of them are phenomenal musicians. They all go to music class. They all do remarkably well. I listen to them playing and I'm blown away at how good they are and not because they're my kids. But what they don't teach at their music school, which is one of the best music schools in Southern California, coastal music, they don't teach anything about the business of music. They don't teach anything about the business of entertainment. And in due respect, you know, that's why I am where I am now. We were so poor growing up. One of the first ideas I had as a performer is I need to make money. And unfortunately, you know, and, and, I, and most people watching this will know, it's not enough to be a good artist. It's not enough to be a good actor or performer or good anything. You better learn how to sell. And that's obviously what Turning Point helps with. That's why you want to go to Irresistible Influence. You better understand that show business is two words and business is the bigger word. And That's so true. if it were me, John, I would immediately reach out to any of the clients that you have already uh, you know, interacted with and offer free, con or offer not free consultation, offer consultation to these people that say, we're teaching a mini workshop. Here is what it is. It's a webinar we're going to do. We're going to invite everybody from our client list to it. And the whole webinar is about how do you make show your business? How do you make money? doing what you do. So many people inside of acting and in, inside of entertainment are constantly waiting for someone else to give them an opportunity. Yeah. Many years ago, I had an idea for an infomercial and I went through all the traditional infomercial distribution uh, processes, went to all the producers, pitched my show, over a hundred pitches, uh, all except for two said, no, we, we're not interested in the show. Hypnosis will never work on television. Two of them said, we, we'd like to do it, but we're going to take uh, 99 points. We're going to give you one point. So $1 for every $100 somebody spends, we'll give you a dollar. 
And I said, eh, that's not enough. So ultimately, when nobody said yes, I produced it myself. I went and I, I, I went $250,000 into debt and I produced the show myself. Well, as they say, the rest is history. Because in two months, I not only had wiped clean the $250,000 worth of debt, I'd also had $2 million liquid net in my bank account in just under two months. And so, yes, I'd like, I'm excited to see you at Turning Point in person. And yes, I would love to have you invest in First Million Irresistible Influence. And because you guys do what you do, if it were me and I was looking to make five, ten, twenty thousand dollars quickly, I would create some kind of an educational program to teach the people that you are going to seek to serve anyway the business of show business. And if I'm a parent, if somebody came to me today and said, We're offering this class about the business of music, because all three of my kids love music, I would say, Great. Sign them up, whether they end up becoming published as musicians or whether they end up you know, understanding how do I how do we get gigs, birthday gigs for the band? Doesn't matter to me. I want them to understand uh, that art is not enough. You've got to also understand business. You take somebody like a Lady Gaga or uh, a Madonna, who, in my opinion, are marginal as talents go. Uh, Taylor uh, Swift. Uh, again, I admire all three ladies more for their business acume than for their their musical talents. I just watched uh, Taylor Swift's concert, the most highest grossing concert tour of all time, over a billion dollars. And I watched the concert and yeah, I like Taylor Swift. Don't get me wrong. She's just not exceptional. There's just nothing about her performance, nothing about her music, nothing that sets her apart. She is smart as a business person. She produced her, you know, Eros tour concert video. And instead of having it distributed through normal channels like Disney or Paramount, she went directly to the movie houses. She went right to the theaters and said, look, we're going to bypass the middleman. We'd like to give you the movie directly to distribute. But then she kept all those additional profits. So just like me with, with my infomercial, when I produced the infomercial, uh, I self-produced, went 250 in debt. But then when it was done, I owned the deal, which is why I made $22 million in one year because I own the whole deal. So that's, that's my advice to you. Uh, market an information product, market to your existing database. Do not try to reinvent the wheel. Do exactly what you've already been doing. And that is going to be extremely useful to you. And again, I look forward to seeing both you and the bride at Turning Point uh, coming up here in just a few weeks. Thanks. Can I uh, guess pirates? Oh man, that is a good guess for today. And I got to tell you, pirates was, was was one of the words that I was going to use yes, last week and I didn't. So keep listening. That's not the word, but stay on I track. I had guacamole down. I was in the, the green room and it was like, guacamole. It's got to be guacamole. Oh, and man. Have, I, I, was like, I told Erica when I sat down for, for lunch, late lunch, as soon as the show's over, I sat down for lunch. She says, you realize you almost actually said the word. I said, I know. I was talking about <laughs> table side preparation. You go to a Mexican restaurant, they come over. And then I stopped myself before I said it because I almost gave the word. You guys are going to get it soon enough. And, and 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 I know sometimes people accuse me of making the words hard. Yes, they are. I admit it. It's $10,000. It better be hard. Exactly. It's ten grand. And and my wife, again, asked me, when do I think it's going to be given away? I said, probably people are figuring me out already. I bet they're going to figure me out either this week or next week. So it's going to be uh, either, I think it's going to be between twelve and and $20,000 on our first victory. And then after that, it's going to be crazy. Probably going to give away. You know, the prize is probably going to give away every single week. But, uh, we're almost wow. there. Yeah. All right, Thank John, you. take care. I'll see you at Turning Point in a couple of weeks. Life is good. We have awesome people on the show, and uh, we've got more people coming on right now. So if you are waiting to come on the show, by all means, studiomoney.info forward slash live guests before we get you on the air. Uh, let me see. I think. Let me see. My staff tells me Ramon was our next caller to come in. Uh, Ramon, welcome home. You are live on the air. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. My pleasure. Ramon, appreciate where are you, you very much. Where, where are you calling from? I, I'm, in, I'm in Allentown, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, I happen to I'm love PA. I love Pennsylvania. I'm glad you're with me. How'd you find out about my show? 
Well, uh, I've been uh, following you for years, believe it or not. I got one of your books, but I, I didn't finish it, reading it. But I uh, really been following you. And uh, it's about reprogramming the subconscious mind that I love. And, uh, and I know that's true. And uh, <clears throat> what do you do for? A and I, I saw you. I saw you uh, on, on my email. Uh, you, you, I'm in your email database. And you sent me an email, and I said, "Oh, let me check it out." And I'm glad I did because it's really, it's really fun. It's really a nice what you're doing now. What you're doing now, it's, it's, it's really good. We appreciate oh. you very much. I admire you, really. I really admire you, at the bottom of my heart. You're a good well, person. You're a good, you're, you're a good, you're man. A good man. What nation, what nationality are you? I was born in Guatemala. Guatemala. That's Got the it. next country after Mexico. Yes, of course. Next country we after love Mexico is South. We love it. Yeah. What are you doing? And, what are you doing for a living right now? Well, I am actually a customer service rep, but I'm out of work right now because I was trying to, you know, get a business going, multi level marketing. I would think, but it's it's been rough. It's, it was winter here, and it was it was tough, you know, going out. I'm getting older. I'm getting up in years, and uh, so so now I'm thinking uh, going back to work, you know, or or going to uh, do something. I have a channel. I have a YouTube channel. But I usually I I just play songs. I'm a musician. I play guitar. I play uh, keyboards, and I sing Spanish and English. And <clears throat> I've been doing. I've been trying to do something. You know, always trying to do something. But I don't go like a hundred percent on into it. That's what I come short most of the times. But anyhow, uh, you know, I admire you and, and uh, appreciate what you're doing. And so what's your question? I see that my question. Yeah, my question was up upon AI, you know, artificial intelligence. You know how that thing is going on today. Yeah. Yeah. And you can so create the videos just, just by typing a prompt and stuff. So it's really good. I want to get into that. Yeah, what's your question? What's your question? My question was, yeah, how do you how do you make money with AI, with artificial intelligence, especially doing videos? Uh, if you have heard about that, it's a new thing. That was yeah, my so, question. Yeah, I, I, I will answer directly. Uh, communication equals wealth. How we communicate internally determines our actions on a regular basis. And then... Uh, then the second part is how we communicate with the outside world determines what we would have. You, uh, on your input sheet, put you want to ask a question, and then that asked under title, you put would-be entrepreneur. So the first thing I want to do is I want to um, change that to aspiring entrepreneur. Because you're not a would-be entrepreneur. Yeah, you're, you're a brand new entrepreneur. So you're not you know, hoping to be an entrepreneur entrepreneur or maybe might be an entrepreneur you're an entrepreneur you've just started that's number one and the question was how do i use ai or ai video to make money the answer is simple and a lot of people are, are bent out of shape regarding ai they don't fully understand what the implications are what the point is the point of ai is to duplicate myself that's the point the point isn't for ai to become this magical entity that's going to help make me money and do all these magical things for me the point of AI is that it's an extension of me. So when you ask me, how do I make money with AI and you know AI videos, the short answer is you want to put AI out of the equation and just ask, how do I make money? And then AI enhances whatever you're working on. But AI in and of itself is not a wealth vehicle. It is simply a tool. It's kind of like saying, how does a hammer make me money? A hammer doesn't make me money. <laughs> What makes you money is what you do with the it's hammer. You, yeah, it's you. What you do with, the, what you do with the hammer. So True. back to that question for you, as an aspiring entrepreneur, Ramon, if I were to wave a magic wand over your head and let you do anything with your life, and by the way, wh what level are you? How old are you? I'm uh, uh, late sixties. 
already. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So, so I'm, level, I'm, I'm level 61. I am level 62 this year. And I just refuse to, to say I'm up there. And that's why I didn't even say how old I am. I say what level. And it's because there's a difference. People like to level up. And I like leveling up. But I just don't say how old I am. I want you to shake that idea that you're old completely. I want you to ex I want you to acknowledge your experience. You are experienced and you have a whole lot of knowledge, a whole lot of life's experiences that will make your life easier and better, not harder. And unfortunately, people as they mature sometimes get desperate. And they say, you know, now I'm 50 or now I'm 60 or now I'm 70. Boy, I wasted my life. You know, uh Colonel Sanders launches Kentucky Fried Chicken at 65 years old. Martha Stewart yeah. becomes Martha Stewart uh, in the Martha Stewart brand in her 40s. And so, you know, most uh, of the major fortunes of our world were started by people that started on that plan later in life. So here's what I'd recommend you do. Number one, yes, Pennsylvania is cold. Michigan is cold. Ohio, Illinois, Wisconsin, too cold for this man. Um, so I, I don't like dealing, I don't like dealing with cold, which is why I live in Las Vegas and also vacation down in Southern California. Good. The other piece is, is, is when, when I get stuck, I ask myself if things were ideal, how would they be? If I had enough money, if I was living in my ideal home, in my ideal location with the ideal people around me, how would it be? How would your life be different? What would you be doing? If I gave you a billion dollars today but said you need to stay active, what would you stay active doing? Wow. I will do real estate, I think. <laughs> I will do real yeah. estate, buy me, that's how, buy me a house in Florida, and then uh, do some uh, multi-level, you know, uh, homes. I mean, yeah, to- Like multi-family? To create a, yeah, multi-family, affordable housing and stuff like that, work on that. And own a plane looks like yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, so that so, would so that would your, that would be. Here's your assignment. Step one: I need you to learn persuasion and influence. I need you to learn about selling. And so you have Ramon two tickets to Turning Point just by being on the show today. You are in the running to win ten ounces of pure silver. I want you to contact my office at eight hundred ninety two power. Uh, eight hundred nine two p o w e r which is nine two seven six nine three seven contact my customer service department tell them that i uh, chatted with you on the air ask them to send you my compliments what we call our product pack it's a usb drive from our turning point 1-800-92 power it's uh from our turning point it's got a thousand dollars worth of training materials that you can instantaneously download to your computer just tell them you are on the air with me today and I gave you that $1,000 gift in addition to the two tickets to Turning Point. That's going to reprogram your brain. It's going to keep you motivated. It's going to teach you the skills of irresistible influence. And it's also going to have Passion, Profit, and Power, my foundational course inside of there. So get your head on straight, get your sales skills up, and uh, have you start looking for what you want rather than what you think you need to do. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You Appreciate are awesome. It. I would like you to love, man. Thank, thank you. Go you ahead. are too, man. I love you very much. I, I really do. I really love you. Pray for you for your well-being, and you're a great man. You're a great man, and you, integrity, and really you are good too. Guy. My life, my life is blessed because you're in it. Thank you so much, Ramon. Take care. <laughs> love people. Yeah, I, I believe this show is going to make a difference, one person at a time. You know, I, I have people uh, that hadn't. Uh, seen me for a long time. John mentioned he went through Turning Point over 20 years ago, and it renewed his belief in life, renewed his belief in himself. That's what I want the show to do. I want you to be inspired every single day. I want you to say um, that, that you know what, maybe today is the day that I change. Maybe today is the day that I, I put away childish things and I become a new person. July 12th of last year, I remember I was in, enjoying a margarita. I was at home. I had an injured leg and my whole family left and they were all at dinner and they'd all gone to the spa during the day. But my leg was so injured, I couldn't I couldn't walk. So I stayed home and I drank. I drank a whole bunch of tequila, actually. And I got drunk 
And at the end of the day, though, I was I, the family all came back from this very nice restaurant. They went with some friends of mine named uh, Jordan and Amanda Solomon. They treated them to a phenomenal meal that I couldn't enjoy. They came back. And that night, I realized that I just didn't want this life anymore. I, I, I have this remarkable life. And this life with alcohol, I just said, it's, I just don't want it. It's just not me anymore. I, I drank my fair share. And so I quit drinking altogether, 100%. And again, I, I'm not like one of those people that's evangelical about you being sober. I don't even care. It's your life. You, If you want to drink tequila or rum or beer or wine, whatever it is, drink as much as you want. For me, though, I'd already had that enjoyment in my life. And I finally just reached the point where I said, you know what, I'm done. One of my younger brothers visited me over the weekend while we were celebrating my son's birthday. I have younger brothers that are twins. And I didn't know this, but he had pretty much quit drinking like six months ago as well. He said, I just grew tired of it. So I want you to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. I want you to be sick and tired of barely putting up with stuff in your life. And I want you to get to a point in your life right now where you say, today's the day. This is my turning point. And I want you to have it be different. Um... We've heard from John. We heard from Ramon. I also saw uh, Eloise, Dr. Eloise Chambers. You are live and on the air, and I am ready for you now. Welcome home. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't have to call me God. You can call me JC. We're friends. <laughs> Where are you calling from? I'm just south of Seattle, little beach town. I love it. What city? Des Moines. Lovely. And what do you do for a living? That is a I'm, big pause. That is being pause. Can, can continue pausing before you say anything. I want you to know that when you talk to somebody and you ask them a very direct question like that was, what do you do for a living? Or did you steal that? Did you kill them? Uh, watch their reaction because their reaction is as important as their communication will be. So if I ask somebody something and they pause, I'll tell you why they're pausing. They're formulating how to communicate the thing that they want to communicate in a way that would either frame it best and or communicate it best to go down a particular path with the person they're communicating with. So if I ask my kid, what do you want for dinner? He might say, uh, he probably knows what he wants. He's afraid to ask for what he wants. And or he's afraid that if he says what he actually wants, I won't want it. So he won't be able to get it. So he'll pause. You paused. What was the reason you paused when I said, what do you do for a living? What's the reason I pause? Yep. You see, I put Dr. Eloise. Yes. I haven't been doctoring like I used to. I doctor on a one on one basis as I'm going through my day and seeing people and sharing just my heart, my love. People love it. What are you a doctor of? Chiropractic. I love it. Awesome. Chiropractic is one of those things like hypnosis that battled for a long time uh, to be accepted as legitimate. And, you know, chiropractic doctors for the longest time uh, were called bone crackers or wax. And so now chiropractic is, of course, accepted mainstream and, and people aren't embarrassed to say they're chiropractors. You know, even now I, I've made $600 million. I've transformed millions of lives. I tell people I'm a hypnotist. I still get an eyebrow raised from them. Oh, really? Well, what's your real job is kind of what they're saying to me. So you're a doctor of chiropractic. I also see you're the founder of Live the Life You Love. Tell me more about that. That is what my commitment is again to myself. And Mary Morrissey, I'm, sh I'm, are you familiar? Yes. She pr promotes that. Um, and I've done that. And Marshall, I've done, well, maybe it's coaching that I need to do. Yeah. And bottom line, as a chiropractor, and it's chiropractic, tick we call it the tick <laughs> yeah yeah um we're coaching all the time pretty much um and i've done now uh upper cervical nuca work which is 
phenomenal. I got to a point to where I said, I don't want to take x-rays anymore, which is needed with the, the uh, NUCA technique. Of course. Say again, Marshall. Yeah, it's needed to properly diagnose, oftentimes, skeletal challenges. What the, what the x-rays needed for in the upper cervical work is it's based on very specific adjustment. We call it a hole-in-one. Very, very specific. And if you take so, an x-ray. So you, you, you call the cervical adjustment a hole-in-one? They used to call it that. Well, how ironic. That's what I used to call it when I was single. <laughs> Never mind. I'm just joking. I got to get my get my mind out of the gutter, clearly. But uh, My so mind is a... It, it's like when my brothers would tell dirty stories when I was a little girl, and I didn't understand them, and I'd have them explain it. You don't need to explain it. I'm glad I don't understand your joke. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your question today? Marshall, my question is, I've, I've looked at coaching, I've looked at other things, and it's like, not, coaching, it's like, I, I can do more if I lay somebody on the table or they lay themselves on the table. Yeah. And I do network care, it's life-changing. I do NUCA care, it's life-changing. Yet, I came to a point Marshall, it's no coincidence, and I call those coincident gods. You talk about, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I am. You talked about tequila and drinking the tequila and getting, you read my mind so often, Marshall, when I sat right in front of you and you said, it's not too late. And I don't know if you said, it's not too late, Eloise. And probably you did. Um, and I'd been feeling that now I'm at a point to where it's now or never, honey. And you want to, you want to live the life you, you love. You've lived a lot of love and a lot of life. What now? Because I've wanted, you know, T Harv, Ecker, uh, financial freedom. I not only go ahead. I want to help you with that because you mentioned two people, Mary Morrissey and also uh, T. Harv Eckert. And, and I'm glad you mentioned both. Uh, I don't know Mary personally. I know T. Harv extremely well. In fact, at one point uh, for his birthday, he asked to come stay at my beach house for a week for his birthday. And I lend him, loaned him my beach house. Mm -hmm. T. Uh, came to me one day. T. Harv came to me one day and he said, I understand you do this event at your house. I said, I do. He said, what is it? And I said, we call it the inner circle. And he said, so you do this inner circle at your house. And at the time, he said, how much do you charge? Now it's 70000 but this is years ago. It was fifty k for the uh, three-day event. He said, uh, you, I heard you charge $50,000 for it. I said, I do. He said, so what do you give them? I said, I give them, you know, three days of training at my palace in Las Vegas. He said, yeah, but what else do you give them? I said, I, I put them up for four nights at a nearby hotel. I, you know, I take care of their ground transportation. I, I give them phenomenal lunches at the palace. We go out for five-star dinners at my favorite restaurants at night. He said, yeah, but what else do you give them? I said, well, you know, I, I surprise them. I, I definitely give them a journal and a pen to take notes with. And sometimes I'll give them other stuff just to surprise them. And he said, yeah, but what do you, for $50,000, what do you give them? Yeah. And I got it. And I went, oh. I give them me. Yes. I give them me. And he said, for $50,000, I said, yes. And I have a thousand satisfied customers. Yes. He said, but what is it about you that's worth $50,000? That was the challenge. It had nothing to do with what I was teaching them. It had to do with the fact that I knew what the value of what we were teaching them was. And people vote with their wallets. So uh, the challenge with Mary, and she does phenomenal work. While I don't know her, I'm extremely... Uh, aware of what her work is. And obviously she's taught a lot of life coaches. So I want to, I want to address life coaching in general and say part of the challenge with life coaching and in due respect, uh, I don't know you except I know you and I can, the cold read on you is you love people. The 
cold read on you is you're a good soul. The cold read on you is you would give somebody the shirt off your back and be naked if it meant that they could survive and you could help them. And your challenge is you're not selfish enough. And so your all your challenges have to do with money. They got nothing to do with, with work or work ethic or, or what you like doing. Everything you're dealing with, Eloise, has to do with money. And the reason it has to do with money, and the reason you're almost in tears right now, is you recognize that you want to help people, except you often give your services away for free here and there. Somebody needs some help. I'll coach you. I don't. I don't give my services away for free. If somebody stands and I'm at a party and they start bending my ear and asking me for advice, I'll be polite. I'll give them a nod. If they continue, though, I will interject and say, you know, this is what I do for a living, right? And I go, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm asking you. This is what I do for a living. And that's the key that I want to tell you. This is not what I do as a hobby. This is what I do for a living. And while I don't mind helping you because you're my friend, if you want to take this to a professional relationship and have my undivided attention, you need to sign up for a session. Here's the investment for the session. That's how I handle that. That is your challenge. Your challenge is you're too kind. Your challenge is you don't charge enough for your services. And your challenge is that you need to step out of a soft topic, which is what life coaching is, and you need to get into a hard topic, which is what financial coaching is, or anything that the math can be done on. So I just want to leave you with this distinction. A soft topic, it's hard to put a price tag on it. How much is better health worth? I don't know. How much is a great relationship worth? I don't know. But if I ask you, how much would you pay me to teach you how to make 10 grand? Your response is, well, I'd pay you nine grand to teach me how to make 10 grand because then I'd be, you know, I'd be more than 10% up. Yes. So what changed my coaching career was when I stopped as a hypnotist, which is a soft topic. When Mm -hmm. I stopped selling a soft topic and I started selling it as a hard topic, here's what a bad relationship costs you. Here's how much it will cost you to make your relationship good. Here's what bad health costs you. Here's what good health makes you. And here's what I'm going to charge you to help you create good health. When you get to that point, then you're done. But that's where you got to get to. You've been to Turning Point, correct? Yes. When did you go? October of 22, I believe. Oh, my gosh. Come back now. Yeah, please come back. I I know. Yeah, come back because you need it. You need that boost. And you need the capitalist boost because that's the, the... when people come to me and when they learn from me, everybody's in a different place. And if somebody's on this side of the line of learning and I want to get them to this side, well, they're over here. So I got to get them a little further along. And, and you know, some people are already here and getting them to there is easy. Your first thing, your first lesson is capitalism. Your first lesson is yeah. I've got to get you really okay with not asking for money, insisting on money. My services are professional. This is what I charge. I have a chiropractor that myself and my family sees. She's awesome. She goes above and beyond every single time. She she goes, she gives, she gives better treatment, more care. She's the one that saved my life when I was having heart challenges. I was getting an adjustment. And she said, sit up now. I said, what's wrong? She said, you're turning purple. Uh, she took my, she took my heartbeat. My heart rate was at 155 beats a minute, which I didn't know that was fast. I didn't know. She said, you need to go to the emergency ward now. I said, you know, I'm just going to go home and relax. She said, no, you need to go to the emergency ward now. Yes. I went home and she called me for two hours, like every 30 minutes. Are you on your way to the hospital? She At two hours, she said, if you don't leave now, I'm going to come over and pick you up. Wow. I left, went to the hospital, found out I had a torn valve. And that if I had let it go for another couple of days, I, I likely would have been dead. Right. So you are a life changer. You are a life giver. And it is time. For you to live by example and realize capitalism is a great thing and you got people you need to help, but they need to pay you up front. Fair enough. You are awesome. Hey, I'm Marshall Silver. I got to wrap up today's show. As we wrap up today's show, I want to tell you, we had uh, three callers. We had John, Ramon, and Dr. Eloise who all uh, called in. Now's your time to vote. Vote for your favorite caller. To vote for your favorite caller, all you got to do to determine who gets the 10 ounces of pure silver is go to studiomoney.info forward slash vote. If you're watching the show, studiomoney.info forward slash vote. And not only do you want to go to studiomoney.info forward slash vote, 
if you are John uh, uh, Ramon or Dr. Eloise, tell your friends to go to studiomoney.info forward slash vote. Tell them to go and vote for you because that's going to be the distinction that will determine whether or not you end up getting the 10 ounces of pure silver. We're running long today, as we often do, over time. Uh, today's winner inside the envelope. I talked about the fact you must appreciate where you are now because where you're at later will be where you're at now then. I talked about it, and it was a good guess to guess pirate. I talked about X marks the spot. Where you're going is where you are, and where you're going and where the X is. X is the place where all the treasure is. It's also the destination. 226. The word was destination for 10K. Bad news is nobody won it. Good news is tomorrow, 10,000 plus 500 bucks, 10,500 bucks up for grabs. Get at least uh, two or three hugs from people you don't know today. Tell a random stranger they are totally loved because you may be the only one that ever said it to them, let alone today. And uh, make sure you join me again tomorrow where we've got another secret word of the day and great content and a phenomenal guest. Uh, we have a surprise guest who is an expert at internet marketing. I won't tell you who the person is. Uh, he's an expert at internet marketing. I chatted with him last week, got a chance to take a look at his stuff, and he's a fellow Las Vegan. You're going to love him. I'm Marshall Silver, wrapping up today's show. Remember every single day to celebrate life, and I'll see you manana. Take care for now. Hey there, moguls. It's me, Marshall Silver, your personal millionaire maker. Getting very excited about my brand new show coming up two hours a day, five days a week. I'm going to broadcast live to you. I'm going to give you content, information, emotional, mental, physical, and even spiritual power. I'll also invite some of my cool multimillionaire and billionaire friends onto the show to give you more direction, more advice for having it all. All the knowledge to get everything you want and so much more. All you got to do is log in to the show to get information coming to you live from the bunker right here at Studio Money. So stay tuned.